still humans at the end of the day. They, they still humans, you know. They just that's just their way of making money, you know. Like like a drug dealer, he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to make some money so he can feed his family, feed his kids, or whatever. Same thing as somebody selling water on the side of on the side of the road. The same thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't judge nobody because it's hard out here, man. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. You wanted to be in the game, right? Now you're in the game. All right, Jay Jeezy in the building. My man. So let me just uh, let me just start off by saying uh, a good friend of mine sent me your uh, your your soft white. Be underbelly interview i'm i'm subscribed to that uh channel i i don't get every notification on the channel uh but you know i i do you know follow the channel and i i do come across some very very interesting people and very interesting interviews um a friend of yeah. mine a uh, friend of mine sent me your interview and i was like wow this okay Okay, so my man I is... I mean, like... I mean, like, sorry to cut you off, but, like, they're, like, two years, like, like a year before I did that interview, I used to watch, uh... Because, you know, Mark had, like, a bunch of... bunch of hookers on there and that, that he was interviewing, so I would go through every single video and watch it. And, like, the first video that I seen, I think it was some girl named... some girl named Kelly... And she was like 13, and it just caught me by surprise. So that's when I started watching more of it as time went on. And I was like, man, I see some dudes on there in my position. I'm like, man, I want to get on there and tell my story. So, you know, one day I just emailed them and just, um, I just told Mark, hey, I'm going to uh, fly out there on my own expense. I'm going I'm to uh, fly myself out there. I'm going to do the interview. And I'm a, um, I just want to tell people, yeah, this is real. This is what I do, and this is what this is what goes on in society. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't really worried about getting like getting backlash for it. I was just, I just wanted the truth to be out there. This is what this is what I go through on a daily basis. Okay, okay. You you just wanted to get out there and 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 tell your story. That's what it's all about. Your experiences, right? Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I feel like I felt like I had a story, and some people might be too scared to say what I wasn't scared to say. And I was like, man, I'm a pretty open person. Some people get mad because I tell too much on the internet. But I'm like, man, look, man, this is my life. This is what I go through. I mean, we don't, we ain't, we ain't here forever. So I guess while while we here, I'm gonna just um, I'm just I'm gonna just say how I feel, you know. Regardless of who gets mad and who gets offended, you know, it, I mean, it just, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, man. So you, so you, where, where are you from in, originally? I'm from Tampa, Tampa, uh, Florida. Oh, okay. You know, shout out to, shout out to Florida. That's one of my routes. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way down there right now as we speak. You flew out to Los Angeles where Mark is at. What what kind of setup Mark got? Like is because I know when I first start watching him, he was, you know, he was doing majority of the interviews out of his car, and then later, you know, later on his channel, he moved into some type of building that you you can actually hear in the background that is off the street somewhere. Off of, um, that's off of Skid Row. I actually um yeah when I when I caught the plane up there, I spent the night in L.A. And then the next, I, did, I, I flew out there on a the Thursday morning. So I, I didn't get to L.A. to like um, Thursday afternoon. And then I, I spent the night in the hotel. And then the next day, that's when I went out to do the, do the interview the next morning because I, I, I had a flight back down here that afternoon. So I just, you know, I just went straight to his studio, which is off of uh, Skid Row. I don't know if you want, I don't know, I don't know if he's, with me saying exactly where it is, but I'm gonna just say it's off a of skid row, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I've been, I've, he, he took me down there, and I seen the tents and all that stuff, and uh, all that stuff on YouTube, where 
you know, homeless people, drug addicts, all that shit is it, it, it is real. Like I seen it, like with my two eyes. Like I, he he drove us, he drove us down there through some of those streets, and it, it it's bad. It is bad. Like what they say, what they say on YouTube is it, fucked up. You know, so wow, that shit is real. I thought I thought Tampa and all that was bad. No, it's, it's down in LA. It's, it's fucked up. You say it's messed up. So so he actually have yeah, a he yeah, actually yeah, have like a a. A actual studio on Skid Row. So movie. I mean, he. I mean, he move around like he. He go to different cities. He even been down here to Tampa, but I just never. I. I, I never was able to catch him down here. So it just. Um. I would. Uh. I would see him interviewing people from different cities and stuff, or he go out to different. Now he. I'm not thinking. He he move around to different countries and stuff, and interview people. You know. I just, I lately, I just, I've been so busy with my life. I've been, I've been on top of that. So, so every year, every now and then, I, I, I would check out his stuff. But, but recently, I've just been busy. Now you in the studio, y'all get together. He, he mics you up and everything, and uh, you sit down and uh, tell your story. What, what caught me, uh, what caught me of interest is, you know, how, you know, how freely you are. Uh, you know, getting your, you know, getting your rocks off. So, for the people that keeps that keep saying that, you know, oh, that's that's nasty and and stuff like that. Why? Uh, explain, you know, explain to me and the people out here that's listening to the podcast. Uh, why do you do it? Like, why do you, you know, let's just let's just say what it is. Why? Why do you pay for the pee? Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? I mean, like, um, I guess, uh, like I said in the interview, it was just desperation, loneliness, all that stuff. And losing my brother at the time, all that just, you know, all that just compiled. And I was like, man, I had a couple friends out there. I guess they needed help, whatever. And they needed, and they needed some financial assistance. You know, I was, I had just, I had just started working at the time. So I was like, man, I guess, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just do it. You know, I didn't think nothing of it. I, I, I never thought it was a thing to pay for pussy. You know, I never thought buying coochie was a thing. You know, I, I heard about Backpage and all that, but I just, I just didn't fully understand what was going on. Because, you know, see me, I'm from uh, Tampa. You know, this I live by this I, I live by this street called Nebraska. So, like, if you're from Tampa, you know about Nebraska. So I'm not going to get in detail about Nebraska, but... We have like like every I think every city has that like a, a little strip where you go to when you want to do that type of thing. But um, for me, I just feel like um, I just I just I just like it. I, I like the uh the convenience of getting it whenever I wanted to if I had the money for it. You know that that was my thing. Like I didn't have to like get off the porn or anything like that. I could just I could just hit up somebody that was into that like like a female that was um. Like if she was down for that type of thing, I would hit her up and then, you know, do the transaction and and go about my day. You know, it it just was that it just that easy to uh you know obtain that. How long have you uh how 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 long you been partaking in it? Oh uh, damn man, it put me on the spot. Oh uh, since 2017, I'm gonna say, kind of like I'm in the verge. I'm in the verge of trying to. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to you know trying to stop trying to get my life together. That's why I went and got my CDL. But uh, you know, trying to stop. So like, I'm trying to you know trying to get serious now because bro, you got, wanna, like, you, you got your you 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 got the golden ticket, my guy. <laughs> you got you you say you got your CDLs. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but um. But yeah, man, you you're right. Every you know, every city, every state, every you know, every every city, every state has has a strip, has a hood. You know, down in L.A., of course, is Figueroa. Down where you at is is Nebraska, and then up here where I'm at, nah, you know, that's our, what I was getting that. That's what I, that's that's what I was getting. That's not it's not Nebraska no more. 
Oh, it's not Nebraska no more, but at the time it was. But Nebraska, no, Nebraska is known for like trainings and shit. That's that's the thing. That's the fucked up part. Oh, okay. But as I know, I, was... I, know, I know, I know, I know all the spots down here. But I just, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to tell people where where I go to because you know I don't want you know some people might be listening. So I'm not going to disclose all of that. I got you. I got you. And that's and as I was about to say, you know, up here, you know, up here where I stay at, you know, the strip up here is 123rd uh, and Superior. So, yeah, you know, every state, every city, every, you know, every city has, you know, has a strip, has a hood. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. All right. So. So in in that interview, you 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 mentioned because Mark asked you, uh, did you have any relationships or anything like that, uh, you you mentioned in that interview that you know you you had some, uh, not all of them lasted. But when when you also mentioned that you didn't want to, you know, hit every female. You know what I'm saying? Was and and you just want to just you know, become a client. In other words, to you know, to a, a handful. Is that because of is that because of uh you know like you you might be afraid of STDs or anything like that? What what was the reason why you you know you you limit you, know, you limit your you minimize your uh your your options out there? To minimize the risk of you know that and get caught by the by the feds and all that stuff because you know once you get a charge, I think they put you on a registry or something like that. So. That's what I'll be trying to avoid. If, if, like, if I know you, if I know you for years, I try to, I try to stick with you. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to, I don't, I don't like to hit a different one. It's just, I, I, it's just too much. And, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come off that honestly. So, I'm trying to just stick to like one person because it's just not something. I, it's not something. Growing up, you like, man, I want to, I want to fuck with some. No, no, I, I ain't never grew up saying that stuff. Like, I, I just. I, I thought I would be getting married one day. I thought I'd be having kids and all that stuff the right way. But um, I just thought, man, it, this is not something I, I plan to do in my life. You know, this is just something that came up. You know, I, I I didn't expect to do all of this. But as far as what you said, yeah, I try to I try to minimize the risk so I don't end up getting in trouble. You know, because you know, if you see the it all it takes is the wrong the wrong ad to respond to the wrong person. You could be end up. You could end up missing. You could end up getting hurt. You could end up getting robbed. You could get arrested. Any anything could happen. So I try to stick with people that I know, like I, like I've been doing. Okay. So okay. I've been seeing that is that is always that first time you see somebody. It, it, that's the that's the that's the most crucial part. The first the, the first meetup. That like, that like you don't know this person. This person don't know you. So. And they had they like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this nigga, I'm gonna rob this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You, you don't know what, you don't know what people are thinking. So, if that first time go right, that that, that makes me decide if I want to go see him again and again and again. Have Have you ever been caught up though? I mean, have you ever been in a situation nah. that, nah, that? Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? And a large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. Venti is large. No, venti is twenty. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been lucky. I've been lucky. You know, I've been, really, I've been very lucky as a late. Very, very lucky. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be lucky, but you know, I've been very, very blessed, man. I'm gonna tell you because I've been hearing stories about people saying talking about they, they, they were seeing somebody and they got robbed or, or they got hurt or, or. Man, with a sting operation, I'm like, damn, bro. It, I, that just never happened to me, though, yet. You know what I'm saying? So okay. that, that's just um, something that uh, I keep in mind. Like, man, maybe I should see this one again or again. I don't, I don't, I just, I just, I'm too, I'm too afraid to see somebody brand new nowadays. So I, you know, you know, to move along. Uh, so you say you definitely going to change up. You're going to slow down. You just want to mess with, uh, you know, mess with one that you just been messing with for a little bit. What do you say to what? What do you say yeah. to people? What What do you say to people when they be coming on making you know like TikTok videos about lot lizards and 
and females in that pos- uh, 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 position and all like that. What, what do you what do you say to people like that that has some negativity towards you know females that's in that in that I mean, side? They still, they still, work? they still humans. At the end of the day, they, they still humans. And, you know, they just that's just their way of making money. You know, like like a drug dealer. He's trying to he's trying to he trying to make some money so he can feed his family, feed his kids, or whatever. Same thing as somebody selling water on the side of on the side of the road. The same thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't judge nobody because it's hard out here, man. You know, those, those women out there you see, they they trying to make a living for themselves, even though that's not the best way to do it. I mean, there's other ways you can make money, but um, I feel like they're still people. At the end of the day, they're just in a bad situation. In my opinion, they just, they just something fucked up happened in their life, and they out there, you know, it is what it is. All right, that's what's up. All right, all right. And like, I feel like, I feel like, my, my I feel like people got pervert. People got people want to get their rocks off. People want to get their nut, not all that stuff. So, so like I guess that's what they do because they know it's men like us out here that 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 want that type of stuff. So they'll 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 they'll, they'll try to capitalize off that. So I don't know. I just I just my opinion. I just feel like at the end of the day, we still human. At the end of the day, we still people. I'm curious on how the payment goes down. Do you guys make transaction through uh, Cash App now? I, I do. I do strictly Cash App. I don't. I don't do cash. I do Cash App because I don't. I used to do cash back in the day, but I, I started doing Cash App. I don't. I don't touch. I don't touch cash. I don't touch money like that. Everything I do is digital. So, so whatever certain amount, like let's say they want seventy, and the ATM spitting out. Hey, you know, cash up. It, the, the, it, 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 it. When I cash up somebody, they want seventy. I can send them seventy. Seventy, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't gotta send. I ain't gotta give them eighty, or I gotta give them sixty, or I gotta break, break change, you know all that stuff. I just do it through cash up. I don't have cash up. So that's how I do. I just do it digital. I don't. I don't like the. Uh, I don't like going to the ATM. Let me. Let me ask you this: Do you do the transaction, like? I do. I'll be like. I'll be like. I'll like, I, I, I pay you when I see you. When, oh, I, when okay. I physically see you in person, we have got to do it. Other than that, I don't. I don't do it beforehand. I don't, I don't do no deposits. Deposits are scams to me. And if a girl asking me for deposit, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm straight. That's what turns me off automatically because I know she ain't. She ain't. She ain't really. She ain't that type of female. So I'm gonna leave her alone. You know. But 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 I'm the I'm the type of dude. I'll pay you when I see you. Same thing with cash. I'll pay you when I see you. Where where the meetups are at 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 times? Do you go over their houses or do you guys meet up at a hotel? In the car, in the hotel room, in the house, shit, sometimes outside, in the in the cut, whatever. It depends on the women and the situation that she's in at the, at that time. So it it really depends. But most of the time it'd be more more commonly it'd be in the in the car or the hotel room or their house. Okay. Like that. All right. So, that's what's up. That's what's up. up. That's what's up. My man Jay Jeezy yeah. in the building, y'all. We are having a good conversation. So you uh you know you 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 said in you said in the interview that you know you worked in uh several industries but you decided that it was time to you know get your CDL uh, do you have your yeah. CDL now, or are you in the process of getting yeah, your CDL? I, I, I got my CDL last year. I mean, not my last, last month. My bad. My last month, I got my CDL. Um, yeah, I got it. it took, I, I went to. Uh, I went to. Uh, I went to a school that my my job paid for, and they 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 have funded the, they have funded me to go to school, so. Basically, I did it that way, so I didn't have to. Um, I didn't have to like you know you go to a company and you got to work there for, for, work there for a year, and if you leave before that year is up, you got to pay them back. See, my my job funded me to go to school, so I don't have to go through all of that, you know. So I don't want to sign no contract or anything because I I wasn't I wasn't into signing contracts and all of that stuff. So I just wanted to go in there, find find what company that works for me. And then stay with that company for what, however long I want to stay with them. 
Okay, that's what's up, man. Now you're you're down in Florida. It's it's not that many companies yeah. that's you know that's 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 doing yeah. that. Uh, what it's, it's, you you lucked up with this company that actually paid for your uh, CDL? Uh, it's, it's not a company. It's a school. It's called uh, it's called Sage Truck Driver School. Mine was out in Plant City, so so my school uh, we did one week in the classroom and then. I then they they had they they had to get our permits and stuff, but it took it took me because I because I was working so much. I, it took me a little bit longer than expected to get my permit. So, but when I when I once I finally got my permit, I had they had me go out to the school and, and practice and practice the backing maneuvers because the school don't really teach you how to drive the truck I, I actually, and I only went out to the school like eleven for eleven days to uh you know practice before before my test. So basically, out of them, out of them eleven days, only three days I actually got on the road. So every other day was just practicing backing maneuvers, you know, the straight line, the offset, and the alley duck, all that. So that's what that's what I struggled with more than anything, you know. A little bit on the pre-trip, but you know that once you watch the videos and stuff over and over, and, and you record the the, uh, the the instructor when he's on showing you the parts of the truck, the, the, you know, the engine. The, the trailer and all that stuff, so I, I caught on eventually, so that that was easy for me, so I did that. But so, well, um, as far as backing, the alley duck was the hardest. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. Oh, okay, shout out to Shay, uh, Sage yeah. Truck Driving School. I called them up and had a had a good conversation with the uh, with them. So if you guys are interested in Sage, definitely uh, check out that uh, video. And see if they can help you out with your CDL today. Put that coffee down. I recommend Roadmaster. They got a higher passing rate. I heard. Because I had a couple friends that went out to Roadmaster, got their CDL. They passed the first time. All right. All right. So, Jay Jeezy, man, you, uh, so now you got your CDL. Are, are are you driving right now? What, what's your status in? Oh, right. uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just explain what happened because I know I didn't get in depth for what happened. Um, so you know this company called Night Transportation. It's uh I think all girl was working for them too. So I I had I was the first company because I was about because honestly I was about to go to um. I was about to go to another company. They do team driving. I don't want. I'm not going to disclose the name, but but I was going to go to this other company because you know when I was get when when I was in school, I called them up and they they gave me a pre hire letter. So I, I was been, I was going to go to them in, initially, but then I get a call from one of the recruiters at night because it was so hard for me to get in contact with somebody out there because nobody answered their phone. Let's be honest, at night. So. Once I um, so once I got a hold, got got a hold of one of the recruiters at night. That's when I went through. That's when I went through the process. I'm gonna try them out first, I guess. So I got hired on, and then I got I got paired with my trainer. And then once I um started, once I started, once I got with my trainer, that's when that's when he started to see yo, what are you doing? You know, and I'm saying I was I was in the truck, you know. The first night that I started driving, it was kind of hard for me to sleep because I never, I, I, I never been in a, in a truck with a sleeper, you know. So I, I was never used to, I was never used to the whole process. I just, I did get a little bit of practice to, to get to get the CDL. So I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get the, uh, I, I didn't get the train that that, that I should have got. But anyways, we was on the Interstate 75, right going towards um, <coughs> I 10. I, I was struggling on my first day, so basically, when I was driving, I would I, I would have a hard time trying to keep my truck in the lane and stuff like that. Like I was in the far right lane, trying to drive in a straight line was 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 the toughest one because nobody showed me how to like keep the truck in the lane. Nobody showed me how to like you know, nobody really showed me how to actually drive. They just sat in the sat in the uh, passenger seat and just. You know, just stared into the stared in the space while I while I was just trying to figure out what to do or or hoping I didn't 
hoping I didn't hit nobody's car or nothing like that. So he was like, so he was going out to Texas. And basically, it was just that it was just, it was just, um, he was just getting frustrated with me and trying to, um, basically saying, you know, you didn't go to a good school. They could, they didn't teach you nothing when you was at school. Da, 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 da. You should have, um, you don't need to be out here. You're not ready for trucking and all that stuff. So basically, we got, we had a, we had a load going out to Texas, came back to Florida. Still like, man, I'm going to drop this back off in Lakeland. So that's where the terminal was. So basically, once we get about the Lakeland, he he's he telling the terminal manager, "Now this dude ain't safe. This dude, this, this dude ain't ready to to be on the road." Da, 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 da. So, so basically, they called me. They called me into the office and said, "You know, you know, our trainer told it told us that he's concerned about your driving. So I think I think it's best for us to tell you that that we're going to have to remove your stuff from the truck, and we're going to let you know if we want to move forward." With deployment and all that stuff, so I wait. I wait for them to call me back, and they talk about we're gonna have to let you go. So basically, just like that, within within not even a week, I was driving. I'm already fired. So that 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 that, that really that really was hard on me because I went to school for it. You know, invested all this money trying to get my CDL. You know, went to back and forth to the DMV doing all this work trying to you know go to the Go take all these tests and stuff, you know, DOT physicals, you know, worrying about my health and all that stuff so I can get my license, all just to be fired within six days. You know, that that was tough on me. So that 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 took a whole that that took a whole uh, that, that just that was tough on me. So I just now I'm like I don't know what the, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my license now because I don't want to know what they put on my back report. I don't know what they what. I don't know what he actually said to them that, that, that made them want to fire me, you know, that type of thing. Unfortunately, that trainer, by the sounds of it, you know, he was just a little bit too on the impatient side. He 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 didn't have no patience with you. I mean, you're, yeah, you're, like, you're a new job, driver. He, you're, basically, he, basically, he, he basically told me, my, my job is to, to sit here, you drive, and his job was was basically the, the, the just to be a passenger, like you, like he, he expected me to know what I was doing once I got in the truck. You know that's 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 what, that's what his thing was. Like he said, everybody taxes with me. If if I don't feel comfortable with you, you're not gonna drive for for a night. So that was his thing. You know, like so I guess it, I guess maybe I just just wasn't ready. Maybe I just jumped into it too fast, or maybe. My school pushed me in and out, and then really teach me how to how to actually drive the truck, and and, and they only taught me how to get the CDL, but they didn't teach me how to drive the truck. You know, they didn't give me the proper training that my trainer told me I was supposed to get. So man, I was having all these thoughts in my head. So I, I guess um I kind of have I kind of blame myself for it, but then at the same time he was a little too easy, kind of he 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 was just too strict. But who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Again, like I said, it just sounds like that this trainer just didn't have no patience with you. Um, all right, you know it's it's discouraging. I I I can feel it. You know, I can feel it in your voice, man. It's it's discouraging. But don't don't let that discourage you, bro. Uh, don't don't let that discourage you. There's there's a lot of trucking companies. Uh, you know, a lot of starter companies that understands that, you know, you're a new driver. So you're not going to be uh, proficient in driving when you get into the truck. You know, there's a lot of things that you're going to have to get used to. So don't let that discourage you, man. You know, just because, you know, night didn't give you the opportunity or the chance for that matter. There's other companies out there that that will give you the chance. You know, you still got opportunities bro you got your you got your cdl you got a clean background you got you don't have nothing on your clearing house so you know there's there's the, the the options is endless for you right now you know you can call up rail transportation you can call up snyder uh snyder is like the boot camps um how about a 
smoothie. What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee. Buddy, relax. Companies, like most of those companies, because I'm from Florida, most of those companies, I call up <clears throat> every single company I could think of. Most of those companies don't even want to, either either because I don't either because they don't have nothing for CDL graduates or they just don't hire out of Florida. So it was already hard for me to find a job in trucking, you know. It was already hard. So basically, I feel like it's, now it's going to be harder because now they're going to see, now they're going to run my deck report and be like, I see you with that night on, on, in July of 2023. What happened with night? And then they're, they're let, let me let me let me let me interject. Uh, just because that's on your DAC report, that doesn't mean that another company wouldn't give you a chance. You you can explain that, and and they can probably pretty much see that you was a new driver, a brand new driver, and that yeah. company could probably see that. Hey, you know this is a new driver. You know he's inexperienced. So let's just chop that up as inexperience. Let's let's give him a chance. Yeah. Uh, you are right. Being from Florida, um, being from Florida, you 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 kind of like in that little bottleneck right there. You know, a lot of companies don't yeah. hire out of Florida, uh, and companies that are in Florida is looking for experienced drivers. What I would suggest. Um, is I don't know if you have the funds to do it or the means to do it, but if you know anybody in Georgia, try to find a person that you can link up with in Georgia. See if you can use their address and then do. I don't know nobody. I don't. I don't know anybody from Georgia. Would it be would it be possible for you? Would it? Uh, I, I I know this is a stretch, but would it be possible for you to uh, to find residents in Georgia? I mean, it would take me a while, but um, I could try. But it's gonna take a it's gonna take a minute. Well, if you if if those two options are available to you, definitely jump on it but again you know in your current situation don't don't let that discourage you man it's still you know still look there's still companies out there there's still places that uh that you can look through you can go through uh social boards you can go through uh driver posts you can go through an app called lane finder i mean i know it's it, it it's it's going to take it, it's going to take a while. It's going to be a little bit stressful, but trust me, And it, it, at the end of the tunnel, man, it, it'll be all worth it. You know, as soon as you get out here and get your experience, you know, you'll be able to, you know, travel, you know, you'll be able to, you know, make money and all like that and try to up your skills and everything. But first thing first, you, yeah. you're, you're right. You, you need to get with a company that has, uh, a, a good trainer that has the patience to to train you, and a lot of these guys that's training now don't even don't number one have the patience, and number two don't even have the experience. They they get in it like three months, six months, or whatever the case, just so them like in your words, his his job is to sit there. No, your job ain't to sit there. Your job is to help. Your job is to your help. Your job is to help. Your job is to instruct. Your job is to make sure that this this young driver understands uh, what's going on. That's your job. No, you just sitting there making money. That's 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 all that's on your mind. And that's it was unfortunate that you got hemmed up with one of those type of train uh, trainers, man. But uh, like, I, like I was having trouble, I was having trouble cranking the landing gear, and you know little stuff like that, like cranking up the landing gear for the trailer till we were dropping the trailer, or pick, or hooking up to another trailer. I was having trouble with the landing gear because 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 it wasn't you know I couldn't get it to crank up or down. He was like, man, what are you doing? He was like, this ain't for you because you need to do something else. 
like like this ain't your this ain't this ain't your lane to da 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 da. And I was and I was trying, you know, I was I was out there, was, but but he was like, man, this ain't for you. And then or oh, it was another instant I forgot I forgot to, I forgot to mention it just came up. So we was leaving, like I said, we was going back to Florida. So we was leaving, I think we was leaving Gulfport, Mississippi. We got a terminal out there. So we was, so he had me drive at like five o'clock in the morning. We had pulled off at five. So I was driving down I 10 for like seven, like six, seven hours. And maybe we we stopped like two times down I 10. I think, I think one in, I think Mississippi and, and, and Florida or two and whatever. So we were just driving. So after like seven, eight, like six, seven, eight hours, I started getting a little tired. I'm like, man, I, like my whole thing was if I if I get tired, I'm let I'm I'm let the train know I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I'm getting kind of tired. So I tell him that I'm like, man, I'm getting kind of sleepy. He like, you sleepy? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sleepy. Like, man, whatever, man, just pull over. He like, man, this shit ain't for everybody, dog. And, that, and that's what he was just saying over and over. This dude, this do something else. So, so um, once I once I found the found the next rest stop, I pulled over, and he took over the truck. He said, "Man, we going back to Florida. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drop you off in Florida, and they gonna talk to you." And that's basically that was basically the end of it with that training. But yeah, I was struggling with the landing gear. And he was just getting more frustrated. Like everything, every little thing that I was struggling with, he just got more frustrated. It's like he didn't have the patience at all. Yeah, that's 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 the wrong wrong type of trainer to get with, man. That's the wrong type of trainer. All right, well, JGZ. Yeah. Hey, I I definitely appreciate you uh, coming on this morning, man, and chopping it up with me. Uh, definitely much success to you in your CDL career, man. Hopefully you get with a company that, that, that would, that would get you right. And you'll be, you know, out here with the rest of us, you know, doing the damn thing. I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about just doing yard jockey or something like that. Like just moving trailers in the yard or something like that. Okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. You know, you got to start small, man. You got to, you know, you got to start small and, and then once you get good with that, because if you're a yard jockey, they're going to make sure that your backing is going to be on point, bro. <laughs> yeah. They're going to make sure of that, man. JGZ, man, again, thank you very much, man. You stay safe out there. You definitely stay safe out there, bro. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Nah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. And again, like I said, don't let that uh, discourage you. Oh, no, I hope I don't fall. <laughs> Big cheese got it locked. What you want me on?